Hello, my name's Ian Moore. I am the CEO of the Finders Association. And the the uh, FIA, as we'll shorten it to, and we keep saying that every five seconds, uh, represents about 800 companies in UK. Uh, we're a not-for-profit organisation that's purely focused on fire safety to the public. The first thing to say about it is probably just the shock of what everybody saw and uh, I wouldn't say we're any different in the industry but probably understanding a little bit more about what should and shouldn't happen um, and it was a frightening time to sort of see that and a lot of people felt physically ill about it and uh, it's the sort of thing you see on TV all the time in third world countries and you look and you feel how sad but within 10 seconds you sort of move on your emotions to the next subject but uh, in our time, in our country, that is unprecedented to see that sort of fire and it's really, really frightening to see. So I think the way the industry looked at it now, I think is a lot of inward looking about what we do and what we don't do. There'll be a lot of fire companies, I'm sure, will be examining themselves and thinking, what did I do last time? How did I design this building? What materials did I put here? There's a lot of um, talk about what happened, what didn't happen, still under review, of course, but. I think the industry then needs to sort of analyse itself and the government kick-started that with the Dame Judith Hackett report asking her to put together a re review of uh, building regulations and fire safety in general to see exactly what we need to do to change to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Well, she formed six working groups initially, subsequently two more, but the, the six original ones really tried to break it down so they could talk to industry and various other stakeholders um, to get some expertise advice into exactly what the situation is and what they advise about changes to make sure, again, this thing doesn't happen again. Now, out of the six um, working groups, the FIA are involved in four of those, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of people were volunteering and there's a lot of people disappointed they can't be involved, understandably, uh, because everybody wants to sort of uh, make a difference in what's happening now because this is probably the most significant um, thing that's happened in our industry in my lifetime for sure and probably will be for a lot of people's in the future. Uh, so we have a real opportunity to make a difference to get it right and pre-Grenfell I don't think many people were listening to our voices about what we needed to change and uh, we feel um, honoured I suppose to be involved so deeply in it. But the working groups what we're looking at um, is to sort of put input in throughout our 800 companies and uh, find the way ahead. I think if you chose one um, of the four, I'd probably say competency, uh, mainly because this has been a big, big subject for us. And uh, since I started CEO uh, two and a half years ago, it's probably the number one subject. Um, now, competency, easy word to say somebody's competent, but what does that actually mean? And, and defining what that actually means is the real issue. Um, to pe say people to say they're competent to do their job, unless they have formal qualifications or uh, experience that other people recognise as well, how can you say people are competent? And this has always been the issue that I could get the first guy walking uh, along the street and say, come and design my building fire alarm system please and do my risk assessment and then install it when you're finished. That could be anybody walking down the street, which is, in my view, farcical. Uh, and we've been professing this for many, many years. So Grenville hasn't changed that. Um, but we're now starting to sort of think about what actually does competency look like? How do we define competency? And within the, that working group, there is a lot of conversation about how we actually define competency. One of the ways that we've been putting together for some time, and again pre-Grenfell sorting this out, is about qualifications. Uh, I mentioned about people doing risk assessments and installing fire alarm systems and just focusing on fire detection as one sector of this building regulations and fire safety. Uh, nobody has any qualifications that are formal, um, so anybody can do it. We used to do training courses, we train nearly 8,000 people a year, but previous to this there wasn't any, it was just our own thoughts on what competency looked like. So now we're an awarding organisation, so we have nationally qualified, uh, national recognised qualifications to level three, which is effectively about A-level standard. And these started on the 1st of January. So 
this is what we're looking at to sort of put a bar to, to sort of say this is the minimum that we think you should have to work in this particular sector. Uh, I think the big call from Dame Judith on this, and I've been to a few presentations that she's given, uh, another one quite recently, and she talks about cultural changes in our industry, uh, and I totally and utterly believe in that, but there also must be an understanding, it, it is easy to say that, but there's commercial pressures. When you're bidding for projects, they're looking to cut corners, and everybody likes to point a finger afterwards. I mean, there's been much discussion about cladding, whether it was replaced at the last minute for a cheaper option. I can't give you comments on that for obvious reasons, but one thing I will say, there are always commercial pressures to deliver the cheapest possible and the biggest returns. Um, so they must be in the thought patterns of when you're talking about cultural change because although it will happen to start with and the industry will concentrate on, on delivering best practice, what will eventually happen is you come back to the lowest denominator in some areas where people are looking to make more money. So the government needs to keep that in mind, that they do insist on various levels of, and we, we mentioned competency, let's talk about competency. So when building regulations are reviewed, something we've been asking for for many, many years, and now, surprisingly, people are now listening to that, they do need reviewing. Uh, the fire safety standards need reviewing. The levels of competency need reviewing. The cultural change we have been pushing for and trying to do. So let's hope the government get behind us and saying, okay, we are aware there are commercial pressures in this, therefore we will support you in these activities. I think tougher than we thought, uh, to be honest. I, I think we just thought we'd just move to a different set of uh, questions and uh, different learning techniques, and it's been hard for us to put together. And we were quite surprised how many failures we had. It started on the 1st of January, well, not the 1st of course, but about the 3rd of January anyway this year. And uh, we were surprised how many failures we had to start with in the initial tests because of that level. Um, and, I, and I used the word we as well because I was involved in that. And we all thought we knew more than we thought we did because we knew more than others not in the industry. But that's still not good enough. Um, so it's going very well. The take up's very strong. Uh, we put together a, quite a strong course because it is. Uh, looked at by people like Ofqual to understand the, the quality of what you're awarding. We can't just give out qualifications uh, unless they are of that level. So a little bit of kickback from industry saying our guys are failing on this, what's going on? And this is one of the problems is we, we have to sort of convince industry that we really do need to raise that bar to this level as a minimum. Um, so going well, uh, the numbers are good, uh, which is exciting for us. And, one thing I will state is we're not for profit, so we're not doing this for profitability reasons. This is all about fire safety. I think the government can support us. I mean, the industry really um, very much can support us by everybody insisting uh, that you have these qualifications to work. And I think the bigger companies will probably start looking around to put a bar uh, to say this is the minimum. But you look at gas safe, I mean, you used to go in my time, because I'm a little bit older, that Corgi registered with the, uh, the gas engineers. They had to be registered and professionally trained, which is now called gas safe. I mean, we would love to have something like fire safe, but the government are very much into deregulation and the chance of them insisting upon a qualification in the fire industry going forward, I'd be surprised. But who knows, following Grenfell, there may be enough momentum uh, in the public to insist that people are formally recognised and that's how the government can certainly help us and the industry can get behind us to say we've made the effort in putting these qualifications together, we've taken a little bit of um, flack shall we say from the industry because the level is so high but we're absolutely focused on delivering world-class professional training uh, that is a pre-qualified level.